Today we're going to talk about how you can feel heavy even if you're not. Um, so when I used to compete, I'd compete at 155, which is probably, I don't know, you crazy logical metric system people. Uh, what is that? What is, what is 155? Like 60-ish, 62, 60, yeah, something around there. You know. I'm a little bigger now, but not much. I'm like 170. Okay. So uh, I had to understand how to use my weight. And like, I remember rolling with people, and raise your hand if you, if you know what I'm saying. Sometimes you roll with like somebody that's really good and they're like 135 pounds and really small. And you're like, why does this person feel so heavy? Like, oh my God, what the? Has anybody experienced that? It's, it's amazing, right? Like that was magic. So I wanted to understand what kind of magic that person had. So today we're going to talk about it. We're gonna start with a question. Is it good to feel or be heavy? We have a yes. <laughs> Is there any no's? So, sometimes. That's a great answer. Sometimes. It depends what you're trying to do. Okay? So we'll come up here and we'll show moves or we'll show actions. But realistically, it really depends what we want our result to be. Okay? So as we go through this class, what I'd like you to think about is do I want to inspire movement? If you're heavy, especially in the way that I'm going to show today, that's going to inspire movement from your partner. Does that make sense? Like, oh, if I'm the one that's uh, getting attacked and they're heavy, like a heavy knee on belly, right? Like, I'm going to move because I don't want that pain for the most part, right? So I'm inspiring them to move and hopefully inspiring them to move in a certain direction so they can kind of be caught in a spider trap, right? But sometimes, you can be heavy in different ways, which we'll also talk about. You can be like a weighted blanket. Like everywhere you move, it's not like so heavy that you have to move, but it's just controlling, right? So we're gonna talk about both of those ways. All right, so um, we're gonna start off with a drill, and this is gonna be really weird, okay? Um, but we're all gonna do it together. So sp spread out if you can. Give yourself, like you were like this, Give yourself this amount of movement. Everybody find some room. Find some room. I got to stay in front of the camera. Sorry, I just realized that. Okay, perfect. Now, just like we were doing yoga, you're going to try to place your weight in a certain direction through your body. Okay? It's really easy to think about. If you put one hand down, go ahead and put, just put one hand down. And I say, put all my weight through that palm that is down. Put all your weight through that palm. You see how I went from my knees to my feet? And then what you can do, if you would go back, well, there's a lot of weight in the feet, right? Everybody feel that? Now go for all your weight in that palm. There's a difference, right? Your feet feel much lighter. A lot of weight is in that palm. We're gonna do stuff like that. Does everybody get it? Okay, let's go into our little starfish here. All your weight through your right pack. Think about it. Are you pushing through your toes? How are you getting all your weight on your right pack? Now let's go to our right shoulder. Is your butt up in the air? Are you driving through your toes? All right, right hip. Can you put all your weight on your right hip? Left shoulder. Left hip. So if you have your feet in, your, in the air, then you're not driving a little bit into the ground. I'd like you to keep your feet grounded, kind of drive that hip in. Left shoulder. And if you can, be careful, forehead. All right. It's a weird little drill, but we don't think about how we're placing our weight very often, do we? There's always a reason to place your weight, 
if you think about it. And that's what you have, especially if you're small. It doesn't really matter. Like, uh, Chris is going to be my uke, okay, but how much do you weigh? Uh, 105. 105, which I think is a big guy. 240, 250. Yeah. So, for us Americans that are watching. Um, so, if I, let's say, if I put uh, 170 pounds on your jaw, is that going to be a lot of weight? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of weight. If I put 170 pounds in an area like this on your ribs, is that going to be a lot of weight? Yeah. It's going to be a lot of weight. So, if you don't get anything else from this class, get this one thing. <laughs> How are you displacing your weight? How are you taking your weight and putting it in a direction? And are you doing that efficiently? Because there's literally an infinite amount of scenarios. So I can't, I'm going to show you some of the methods, but this is the principle that we're going over. Okay. All right, so let's start with our first one. Uh, yeah, yeah. OK, so again, yeah, you can come in. Thank you. Uh, let's see, where am I going to start? start All right, so we're just going to, I believe that we all learn better together. It doesn't matter what belt, how long you've been doing it. You need feedback. Okay. The more information that you have, yes. Please hold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think whenever we move, we think about it as information. Would everybody agree that if we have, uh, the more information we have, the better decisions that we can make? Does that make sense? Yeah. For the most part, right? <laughs> the more information that we have, the better decisions we can make. That applies in life, but it also Ooh. applies in jiu-jitsu. Okay. So, as I'm doing this, I'm going to elicit information from my partner. So, I'm going to try and be heavy for a second, okay? You'll see what I'm doing. All right, he has no idea. All right, so, uh, let's start with this. Tell me how this feels as far as weight. Doesn't feel that heavy. Doesn't feel that heavy, right? Like, I, you can probably sit here, have a cigarette. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Okay, so let's say something like this. How does that feel? That's adding a little bit more pressure. A little bit more pressure, right? Okay, so... In those two scenarios, what was the difference? Legs. He said hand or motion hands. The angle. Surface space, like how much surface you have. All of those are correct. That's the big one. Okay. If I take my weight, <laughs> this is going to be really weird, and go like this. <laughs> if I do that and I spread it out evenly. You could sit there all day. I mean, really awkwardly, but sit there all day. <laughs> right. If I take my weight and I put it like a nail down on him, that's going to make a lot of difference, right? So then what if I take a nail and I try to drive the nail? Okay. So this will be the nail. So did you hear his, like, his, right? So that's the nail. And then what if... I happen to get this <coughs> and then drive the nail. So what I'm doing in this particular scenario is I'm taking a rib, and just like the drill we just did for 30 seconds, I'm putting all my weight into the smallest spot possible. Okay? And then, if we want to drive the nail home, I'm creating counter pressure. That's why we wanted the geese, because we can play with the geese. It's a lot easier to feel really heavy and create counter pressure. Okay, so for our first drill, we're going to partner up. Actually, no, I don't like partner up. We're going to get into groups of three or four. If you're in a group of four, by the way, it's not two people drilling. It's two people drilling with two people watching, because you learn by watching as well. And then we're going to communicate. Well, what was this? What was this? And we're going to help each other. Does that sound good? We're just going to try this side control. So how heavy? Not heavy. Okay. Heavier, heavier, heavier. Yep. And then... Yep. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Should we give that a shot? Yes? Yep. Yeah. All right. One, two, three. There's a couple things that I saw, and normally when I coach, uh, if one person is doing something 
stupid, then it's then it's their fault. If a lot of people are doing something stupid, then it's my fault. Uh, in this case, it's my fault. Okay. So we do want to figure out how to make our weight very small. And in the drill that we're doing, we're trying to make our weight, put all our weight through a small surface area. What I didn't say is we want to do that and also think about jujitsu. Okay? So if I'm uh, just just <coughs> figuring out how to try to put as much weight here as possible, perhaps I would just like uh, maybe rotate like this, if, if, you know, something like this. But this may not be the best for jujitsu. Maybe, I don't know what you're going for. Maybe there's some you know, cool stuff that we can do or whatever, but like understand the rolling. And that goes back to, well, what are we actually trying to do? Are we trying to elicit movement? Why are we doing this? Okay. <laughs> All right. So just think about that. And this is a foreign movement. Who's, who's thought about how you lower the surface area of your weight on your opponent before? That's way more than usual. So I'm glad to hear that. Okay. This stuff normally is foreign to people. Okay. All right. So we're going to we're going to continue, but just think about that in jujitsu context. I'm adding weight, but not just to add weight. Why am I adding that weight? All right. So um, next, <laughs> this is the fun one. Uh, rotate this way, please. Oh, just 180 <coughs> degrees. So my brand of jujitsu is painless, precise, and playful. Now you may think, well, how can you be heavy and be playful? How can you be heavy and be painless, right? Excuse me. The, I mean, sometimes you can be heavy and be an asshole, but you can also do it in a way that, that you don't have to, right? If we're in a competition, there's a fight, a real fight, or we're out in the street, I don't care, right? Then I'm gonna do this in a way that's as mean as possible because I want them to, to stop. But in this case, I like Chris, okay? We're gonna do some shoulder pressure and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make the surface area very small, but I'm going to show two different ways of doing it. Okay. So let's say we got this side control. We'll have this arm out of the way. Okay. I'm coming through. Now, again, when I'm rolling, I want to know why I'm doing something. What would be a reason that I want him to look this way? Yes. Because he's only going to throw you this way. That's right. When he bumps you. That's right. Yes. You can't turn into me. Yep. So I'm either trying to hold him in place or I want him to go that way, right? So let's talk about the mean way first. Sorry, buddy. So the mean way, what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to use our weight to turn his head, which breaks his posture. Could you imagine bench pressing with your head like this? Do you think that you could bench press as much as you would normally if you were in good posture? Probably not, right? So that's what we're trying to do. He's much struck. Could you, you probably could just bench me, right? Like, let's see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could probably just bench me off. If I have his neck and I'm this way, does that feel like you could bench me off anymore? No, not really. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about that. Okay. We're going to do the mean one first, and then we'll do the nice one, and then we'll go back and do our groups. All right. So the mean one, I'm taking my shoulder and I'm figuring out how to put all my weight into the jaw, okay? So, pardon me for this. <laughs> so I'm not putting it here, I'm putting it here, and then I'm not putting it just through here, I'm putting it directionally down to the mat. Okay, so remember the drill that we did before. <laughs> remember the drill that we did before, Boom. shoulder. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do to his face. Not horribly comfortable, and this is why Megan doesn't, isn't the ookie for this one. <laughs> I want to go home and, and have a happy life, right? So I'm going to do that, but then we got to think about, okay, well, this is a jiu-jitsu move, right? Like, I don't want to have my hips all the way up in the air. So the nuance of it is I'm here, I find my shoulder on that jaw, and then if it was just what we did, I have my butt in the air, and that is awful. But... He's a strong guy. Go ahead and put your forearm. Yep. Well, if I do that. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> but I was in a good position. 
So I want to keep my hips down. Okay, so I need to figure out for my body in this situation how to keep my hips down, but also put a ton of pressure on his jaw and plant it to the mat. It's fun. It's a puzzle. Right? So we're here. I find that heavy. So in this case, I know that I can change or uh, I can turn my hips a little bit. You see how I'm on my toes? And look at where my hips are now. Go ahead and lift me. It's not going to happen, right? My hips weren't up in the air for him to do this. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the mean way. We figure out how to create a little surface area, drive, you see how I was using my toes to drive through, plant his chin. The nice way is, well, I like Chris, I create a wedge with my shoulder. Okay, so everything's kind of still the same. Not as bad, right? Go ahead and turn it to me. Not as bad, right? It didn't make him move. Like the other one is going to make him move, right? This one was just a wedge. Nicer. On your training partners, on a Wednesday, this may be the shoulder pressure you want to use. <laughs> just create a wedge so they can't look into you. Does that make sense? Is it as effective? Well, it depends. It depends what you're trying to do. But in this case, if we're trying to make sure that he goes home without RoboNeck, well, then maybe I'll create the wedge. Yes? Uh, on the last one, did you have weights on your elbow or not? So, still weight on my shoulder, but I'm not driving it. You sure I can? Yes, absolutely. So, I find that shoulder right into that jaw, okay? I could, st at any time, so I'm here. I guess I have a little bit of weight in my arm. I'm not driving it all the way through. Like I, I can feel some weight down as I'm talking. I'm trying to be nice. But at any point, I could drive through and make it awful, right? But I don't have to. Okay, so I have some weight on his chest. I, I have my weight spread out a little bit more. Does that make sense? And it's for you. Like, how high his body comes and how much weight is touching him. These are all things that first you need to think about and then you'll get to get used to it as you go, okay? So why don't we get back into our small groups. Be careful, don't just go <laughs> onto their jaw, <laughs> okay? But have those discussions. You guys are doing a great job of discussing with each other. That's how we learn. Cool? All right, one, two, three. very active, right? So the way that we're showing this currently is in a stagnant, like uh, we got side control, and then you know we're finding this place, and then we, we you know we're here, and then okay, well I just want the wedge right now because I like Chris, fuck Chris, right? <laughs> but this isn't necessarily a stagnant move. So Megan, can you come in? So she's wonderful at this dynamically. So she'll pass a guard, and Chris, I would just, I would watch out. <laughs> so she'll pass a guard, immediately find that shoulder, and now let's stop right there. Chris, how does that feel? Not nice. <laughs> what? Okay. So there's a couple things. So you had a question of like, what's better, right? So like, if you go back, uh, you can pull off his face, but just, oh. I like where your hips were. Her hips were high, her, well, so is this bad? Sometimes he's a small person. No, no, no I'm going to get to that. Too. It's not. <laughs> not necessarily, right? Because what she's doing is she's pinning his chin. However, she's keeping movement of her hips and legs. So wherever he happens to roll her, she's going to be able to base with the legs. Yes. So, like, look at how she's controlling hip. Now this is a different ballgame. My point in doing this is that this isn't just a stagnant motion. She figured out a way to use her shoulder, like a nail, stapling it down, but yet having her hips in a place that she can move. Does that kind of answer the question that you were saying? So where your hips are, or where your weight is, or where your toes are, or how you're driving, what's best? Well, depends. Depends what you're doing in your game. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you, yeah, if you haven't rolled with her, uh, if she does that, it's just, ugh. She, she's like the best, and she's tiny, and like, you're just like, <coughs> okay. So, 
I think Neon Belly is next. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right, let's rotate you this way. So, everything goes back to the concept. So it's a very, uh, as far as a class is concerned, uh, as a concept, it's just relatively simple, right? We're thinking about how we displace our weight, and if we want to elicit movement, we're making our weight on a small surface area, okay? Neon belly is no different, okay? If I go up to neon belly like this, how does that feel? Comfortable. Comfortable, yeah, that's how dainty I am compared to him, right? Like, sit here all day. Okay, what if I, Jay Pages plays neon belly like this? What if I sit like this? Still pretty comfortable, okay. Now, I decided that I want him to move. What if, how does that feel? Yeah, now I'll move. Now he wants to move, okay. <laughs> so, here, boop, boop. Right? Do we get the principle? Okay. So as we're drilling this, let's drill it in a way that first they feel it on just the abs, right? Then we feel uh, the full shin across. But that's still a decent amount of surface area, okay? Then try to figure out how to just make it be your knee. And then the counter force of lapel or arm or neck or whatever you want, right? Additionally, it's not only about how we're displacing our weight, but where we're putting it, right? So in that scenario, I was a dick, and I put my knee in his diaphragm, right? So our ribs kind of come down here, this nice little spot here. No matter who you are, that's a little bit softer, <laughs> and it's a little bit harder to breathe when you have you know, any amount of weight on you, okay? So think about where you're placing it. So when we're with our partners, not only do you want to go through these like, okay, least heavy to most heavy, right? But we also want to think about where it's at. And where it's at, or what you're trying to do, depends on the body and there's so many different variables. And that's why I'm teaching this principle because I can't answer every question of what's best. Okay, let's go back in our groups and try the one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few comments on neon belly before we continue, okay? So, uh, how do I play neon belly? I almost never do it. I'm sorry. How do I play neon belly? I almost never do it painfully. Uh, I just, you know, it just sucks. <laughs> like, and what am I really doing there? Like, I'm just making them angry. Right, like maybe, I, like if I if I got that tap, I'd be ashamed, like I'd be ashamed of myself because like I don't want to I don't want to do that. Maybe to him I'd be proud of myself, you know, <laughs> because of his mustache and all. But like, um, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> but for the most part, like I want it to be technical, playful, painless, precise. That's not painless, right? My placement or my body placement when in neon belly. Tell me if if this is good. It's so good. Just in general, not you, Chris. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe. What was your right arm? Is this good? Is this good? Is this good? That's your pages. Get in J pages. Then <laughs> argue. My point is, it depends. It depends what I'm trying to do, right? Like I had never seen this before before grappling with him. Like, how easy is it for him to go like this and then go and do an arm bar? I'm not good at it, but maybe he is. No. He sits like a little ball. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> I hope Jay sees this, by the way. That's not, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the answer is it depends. And in each of those neon bellies, I'm displacing my weight in a different way, trying to elicit movement from Chris. Okay? All right, so how we do this, um, actually rotate 180 degrees. As Chris Payne's talked about, I have favorite sides and it's easier to teach from certain sides, so I keep spinning it. All right, so the way that we put weight on isn't just if we're in side control or a dominant position, okay? So what if I do a knee slice, right? I'm trying to save your balls. Okay, so if I do a knee slice like this, uh, how does that feel? 
which feels pinned, but not uncomfortable. Yeah, feels pinned, but not uncomfortable, right? Like, if I do a uh, knee slice like this, how does that feel? It feels like you're about to slide off. I'm about to slide off, okay. So now if I do a knee slice like that. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what am I doing? I'm thinking about how my weight is getting displaced through my shin into his thigh, right? And if I'm really, if I'm really uh, want him to move, or I really want to elicit some movement, I drop that weight. So I'm going to take, watch where my, my body's here. I kind of just bring it back. And I'm on my toe right now trying to make it easy, like, <laughs> because it kind of sucked. But I drop that weight, right? And then I can shear it down. Hold on. Okay, constantly keeping that little surface area as it goes down. And what is your reaction when I do that? Pain. <laughs> and that's a listening movement, right? Do I have to do? No. So when I, painless, precise, and playful, when I come through here, like the first one, like I can pin you, right? I call this a staple, right? But I have weight on my knee and weight on my toe as well. It's not gonna get the same movement but this is a Wednesday night, right? He's got to go to work tomorrow. Does he want a giant bruise on his leg? Would you? <laughs> right? Like, we don't have to win. We're playing a game trying to get information. We're all hobbyists here. None of us are world champions, I don't think. Maybe. Okay? However, if you're in a competition or whatever, yeah, do, you know, do this. But it is good to know the spectrum, right? So. We're going to get into this knee slice pass. All we're going to do is come over. And the first one you're going to do is you're going to over rotate and all your weight's on your knee here. Nothing, right? <laughs> Next one you're going to do is pin your knee like it's a staple. Okay, so there's some weight in my toes. Rotate, rotate, rotate. I just grabbed his ass. It was nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you see how I have some weight in my toes? I have some weight in my knee. Okay. And then the last one. All my weight is going to go through my shin. All my weight is going to go through my shin. Okay? And then the last, last one is you can grab on, control the hip, and drive down. Which does not feel good. Okay? Be careful, but let's understand it and let's talk. You guys are doing an excellent job of talking with each other. It's really, really cool to see. All right. One, two, three. I saw a lot of great reactions of boom. <laughs> oh, that's the one. So you're doing well. And again, it's really awesome to see you guys communicating. Like, ah, uh, this doesn't help. And then figuring it out. Look. Jiu-Jitsu is about figuring it out. Like, we can, we can come up here and say, well, this works for me. Well, I'm different from you, right? And then, additionally, how does this work for me against a person this size or a person Megan's size or whatever, right? So that's why I try to teach principles. You have to show some methods into the principles, just like you have to have some knowledge to develop some wisdom. Make sense? So the last one, and, and I kind of alluded to it in the beginning of class, the last one that we're gonna do is feeling like a weighted blanket. So everything that we've done so far has been taking all of our weight and putting it into a small surface area, right? Well, in this case, we're going to immediately shift weights up. Did you just, did you just hump him in the back? <laughs> oh, okay, that was... <laughs> I've never seen that in a class, he's just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, where was I? Oh yeah, weighted blanket. So it's about dispersing our weight to areas that's needed constantly. Just so always feeling heavy, okay? So a great way to do this, or a great way, position to learn this is from mount, okay? So mount's another way, okay, where's my weight? Well, right now it's all on the map. That makes it easy for him to, to move, right? And as I go down, 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 okay, that becomes a little bit heavier, right? It depends what I want to do with the mall. Which way is right? I don't know. What are you trying to do? Okay. In this case, in a weighted blanket, normally you're trying to make them, uh, you're trying to stay where you are, 
and get them to start scrambling in some way. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to become this nice weighted blanket. So I should be not too heavy anywhere, right? Yeah. But I'm going to start messing with his head. You see how I just came in and just kind of became heavy here? And then go ahead and move. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. <laughs> so the point is, as he moves, my body feels like, oh, okay, this, uh, go ahead and you're trying to hip escape, right? So push on a hip. So he pushed on both hips. So I need to figure out how to drop my weight. So maybe I just shift a little bit. This creates weakness there. And then shift back in. Right? So if he went to one hip, go to like, try to push one hip or whatever. Yeah. So I know that this one's coming up. I might not be able to do anything about that, right? But I can shift my weight. Does that make sense? Almost always in this position, I'm trying to keep some weight here. Why am I trying to do that? Posture, right? It's going to be very difficult. Well, if I go like this, I know the only way that he can throw me is over here. Right? So what if I keep that, and then I'm heavy on that hip? Makes things very difficult. Right? So now we're going to do this dance. Instead of being super heavy in a small space, we're going to be super flowy and let gravity do its job. We're going to feel where they're pushing and where they're going, and we're just going to stick on them, just like a weighted blanket. Sound good? Let's give that a try. One, two, three. This is the segment of class that we needed the gear for this five minutes. <laughs> Everything else you can do, it's just a principle. You can do it in gi, no gi, no gi. So uh, just go down, head over here. So the gi, as my friend over here was doing, adds a force multiplier to things. Okay? So I can drop here and then drop weight, right? But what if I do that? Let me get your gi here real quick. What if I get that and control the shoulder really well? <laughs> you can put people to sleep like that. Okay? To, and he has no rotational movement, especially if I'm killing this one. It's just <coughs> awful. I mean, you could sub people like that, right? If I'm, on knee, if I'm in knee on belly, and I'm not going to do it because he's been such a good champ, right? But what if I grab here and here and then pull up, right? Ooh. With that knee right in the sternum there, good lord. So every position that we have with this, the gi can add some multiplier to it. Okay? Unfortunately, time frame, this is something that you're going to have to work out for yourself. But does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. My favorite is if I'm tired, getting into the side control. And then just creating, I can create a little wedge here, and that's it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Does anybody have any last second questions? Cool. All right, so a couple of things at the end. If there's one thing that you get out of this class, right, it's to think about how we disperse or displace our weight, right? So if we're doing that correctly, correctly doesn't matter, right? It's correctly to what we're trying to do, right? Think. If I'm trying to get him to turn that way, well then, going like that, he doesn't have an option to come the other way, so I know that he's going to do that, right? If I want him to turn into me, like, you know, then I'm going to come on this side of his head and make him go that way, right? Same thing with this, I'm adding weight here, right? If I add weight here, <laughs> really, really suck, and I'm back here, cool. Well, now I know which way he's going to go, right? Yes. From north south. Uh, it depends what you want to do, right? Like, uh, I, if I was in north south and trying to be heavy, almost always if I'm trying to control north south, same weighted blanket idea. So I'm not trying to necessarily be heavy. I'm just trying to control a jawline with my chest. If that makes sense. Okay. So uh, let's see. 
painless, precise, and playful. If that resonates with you, my website is gentleartlifestyle.com. I do coach and I have students all across the world because of these wonderful camps. Um, let's see. Uh, as I know Charles, there's a bunch of us that love to do private lessons. If on this or guillotines or anything else you'd want to do a private lesson, we, most of us will do private lessons. And uh, gosh, we'll end with a, a piece of gratefulness like we try to do. Um, again, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here in this wonderful location. The Heidelberg, I didn't even know where Heidelberg was before this. And it is absolutely stunning. And the people here have been awesome. And the people at this camp have been awesome. So I'm really grateful for that. And uh, this is my last class at camp. So thank you very much.